has a fresh baked look about the first international of the year, the Leiden House Bakery Galway Rally. And it's good news in Galway for many reasons. Dunlop are the new sponsors of the Tarmac Championship, and there's plenty of new machinery and some intriguingly new old cars, like the Lotus Cortinas of Greg Roberts and Drexel Gillespie, who are running in the newly created historic class. This is um, what's left of a 1968 Lotus Cortina. Uh, because having given up rallying years ago because of my age and infirmity, I decided to go back to the old cars and have a bit of fun. And fortunately, most of the international rounds now do have a historic section. And we're going to have a lot of fun in the old days, the way we used to and the way it should be. And that's it. Rolling into Leisureland are some old friends from Czechoslovakia, back in Galway for the second year with the Motokov team. Milan Teaser, a class winner in 89, has a successful Skoda 130, and the new favourite will be driven by Jean Trajbold and Barbara Urbankova. Igor Young from Motokov explains. We are very pleased we were able to take this team back uh, to Galway again. Uh, first time uh, we uh, raced here uh, last year, yes, and uh, we managed to win the class and we hope that we will manage uh, to repeat this win once again this year. But of course this is, uh, this is only to become reality, uh, we don't know yet. We, we took uh, here Skoda favorite uh, this year and we hope that uh, it will be a successful racing car as the old type was. And uh, to add to that we hope that next year, 1991, we will be able to take this car into the Irish market. Okay. Another interesting aspect uh, of the team this weekend, of course, is John Henderson from the north of Ireland. This is uh, really Glasnost at his best. It must be tremendous to join in with your Czechoslovakian drivers. It certainly is, Alan, and we're delighted to be here and absolutely delighted to be part of the, the Barham team. And we're looking forward to the event very much indeed. And just as a, a gift from us uh, to Igor, we'd like to take this opportunity to present some Irish Bushmill, Bushmills whiskey. It's a rather famous brand of, of whiskey, Igor, uh, and from behalf of the Skoda Challenge in Northern Ireland. Thank you very much, and we are delighted that you joined our team this year. Thank, Thank you very much. Yes. The rally is being dubbed as the Battle of the BMWs, and joining Fisher's M3 is Austin's similar version. Well, certainly whenever we've been in similar cars in the past, we've had some very good battles, and, uh, you know, I think this will probably be no exception. Austin, welcome to the BMW Club. Um, the car, of course, is prepared by ProDrive, the same as Bertie's. Yeah, the two cars should be identical, Plum. Uh, mine might be slightly newer, newer than Bertie's, but uh, having said that, I think that uh, the two cars will be identical. Now, obviously, you're the novice in this motor car. Uh, you've had a bit of testing in it. How have you found it? Yes, we've had about an hour to two hours yesterday. Uh, there's a new six-speed box in the car. It's a bit of a problem, but Bertie tells me I get over it after the end of the rally, or maybe after the circuit, so uh, hopefully I get used to it. Any tips for this uh, new novice beside you on driving BMWs? Yeah, I think you'd really need to take this rally to get used to the car, you know. <laughs> Another innovation is that the Metro 6R4s are back. John Price is one of these examples. We've got a restriction on the engine size. We've, uh, we've had to put them down to 2.8 instead of 3 litre. And we've had to run on a uh, plenum chamber. That means that it's a lot less power than the international induction system. Well, now, it's been a fairly controversial decision to allow the, the four-wheel drive sort of supercars back. I think it's the greatest news we've had for a long time in Irish Rally, and I think that the whole thing should never have been banned. The car is absolutely safe. It's one of the safest cars rallying, probably one of the safest ones in this rally today in these conditions, um, and it's got to be good for the spectators and the sport. Bertie Fisher and his new co-driver Rory Kennedy are certainly good for the sport and the tough Mac car sets a blistering early pace, 10 seconds quicker than Austin McHale and Ronan McNamee, who are having to learn about their new machine in horrible conditions. As we go inside the Extravision car, Ronan is reading the notes. On left. Crest. Very fast left. Water. 120. Fast right, and left opens, 170 bumps, sharp right, sharp right, 70, up to the crest and wall, 70. Yes, Austin is having a rough baptism in the BMW, but Kenny McKinstry in the Group N Cosworth is reveling in the conditions. He's amazingly third. 
Frank Maher has been praying for the wet, but maybe this is a bit over the top. His newly rebuilt engine is drowning out in the floods. Only 2.8 litres maybe, but four-wheel drive is ideal in these conditions. Bill Connolly is another strong contender in the Group B Manta. But for Bob Fowden, the rally gets off to a very bad start. The left front wheel is punctured, and as the Welshman exit at a rather leisurely place, his co-driver, Don Wilmot, is determined to stay dry. As some knowledgeable spectators look on, the Group N rivals, Frank Fennell and George Miller, go through as the minutes tick frustratingly by for Bob Foden. That's English driver Ian Donaldson in his Group A Cosworth. Richard Smith is having his first outing in McHale's old car and he's wisely taking it easy to begin with. Finally, Foden is ready for the off. He tucks in behind Pat Kirk's Nova, but almost five minutes have been washed away on the very first stage. At least, Don Wilmot didn't get his notes wet. There's great excitement as the leaders come down from Steve Otty Mountain. Bertie continues to shine, and by the end of the first loop, he will have 44 seconds advantage over Austin McHale. In the Extravision car, we are really getting things wound up over the mountains. Austin is in love with his new car, but he finds the six-speed gearbox difficult to get used to. John Price and Pat O'Donnell now have the Metro up to fourth place, and Frank Maher and Dermot O'Gorman are having an adventurous time in fifth. Bill Connolly is sixth, and Frank Fennell is eighth, but second in Group N to McKinstry. Jim McDonald will have a short rally. He crashes the Manta 400 in the next stage, and the top Motokov Skoda of Millen Teaser is well inside the top 20. This is the hard-charging Sligo driver Dominic McLaughlin in his 1600 Sunbeam, and the almost over-the-top Morris Moffat, whose peaky Group A Toyota drops off the power band. George McCarran is too busy to notice the fast-approaching Connie Smith. However, the Drogheda driver eventually gets the message to let the cavern man squeeze through. The Skoda favorite leads us back to Loch Ray, where Fisher summarizes what everybody is experiencing. There's an awful lot of water on the inside of bands and it catches you out when you go in the cars want to chuck across the road. And, you know, you're courting an accident when you leave the start line, I think, so it's a bit of a of... And courting an accident they were. On the second loop, the leading BMW successfully negotiates this hairpin, but coming out of Carrero Village, the Fermanagh man overshoots, as Brendan Laddie's footage shows. Bertie will have a further adventure on this loop, and we can see why from inside Austin's car, where the conditions are atrocious. 100 very fast left. Easy right. Cut left. 100 caution. Fast left. Cut. Very slippy. And right. 200. Although these stages are being repeated, it is raining so hard that the floods are in different places on each loop. Austin has shed his rear spoiler in the excitement, but the BMWs aren't the only ones to go ditch hopping. That was Frank Maher using the countryside to stop his slide. Again, we are grateful to Brendan Laddie for the footage. Here we can see the rear damage on Frank Maher's RS 1800. But Kenny McKinstry and Robbie Philpott are in worse trouble. They will shortly relinquish third overall and Group N when the differential packs in. And here come the handbrake merchants. Bob Fowden recovering fast after that puncture. Millen Teaser tweaking the 120 round the hairpin. And the ever eventful Morris Moffat with Gavin Campbell on the notes. Once again, we are seeing a spectacular drive from Connie Smith, who will be up in the top ten. 
If the weather was bad on stage six, it's truly rotten on stage eight. Sensationally, Austin McHale comes splashing down the hill in first place. Then it's a sideways price who's up to second. Vincent Mead is sixth, but won't go much further. Peter Lloyd goes through in the second metro. And Dominic McLaughlin in the 1600 Sunbeam is plugging on towards a class win as we move on to Lockray's service again to learn of Fisher's fate. Well, we had a problem with the alternator apparently. The car hasn't been charging for a couple of stages and uh, the battery just went so flat that the fuel pump stopped working and the car stopped in the middle of the last stage. It started misfiring about halfway through the stage and we turned off everything that we could manage without wipers and so on and uh, the car eventually stopped about two miles from the end and we managed to get the battery out of a farmer's tractor and set a jump leads and we got it going again. But. With Bernie out of the way for the meantime, who's the big threat now? Well, you've got uh, about a minute and a half behind, you've got John Price, um, Bill Connolly and Frank Marr, although Frank has been hitting the, the, the scenery a fair bit today. Um, so this sort of conditions now and the rain that it looks like is going to come, I think that four-wheel drive metro will be quite quick. We are second, uh, I think 20 odd seconds in front of uh, Bill Connolly and then Frank Marr comes next. Right, is there a realistic chance of catching the BM? Well, we could his time on the last stage, so I don't know whether that's anything to go by. And how good he is in the dark and how good I am in the dark, because we're probably going to have at least two stages in the dark and I don't like dark very much. Price's dislike of the Merc is evident on stage nine. He will lose 23 seconds to McHale on this stage. Austin now has a one minute 30 second cushion over the Metro. And Bill Connolly is a further 21 seconds behind the supercar. But the real dust demons are Frank Maher and Bertie Fisher. Maher is on the attack and both Connolly and Price are within reach. Fisher is on an epic fight back. He's already gone from 7th to 6th. Fennell's had two punctures, his group end lead has been short-lived, but his problems are minor compared to Ray Monaghan. The group end Sierra is definitely going no further today. Although stunned, both driver and co-driver are perfectly okay, but this is one piece of property that has been majorly devalued in the last few minutes. We thank Emer Porter for the pictures. Peter Lloyd's Metro and Pat Kirk's Nova continue on towards Carra Row, where despite the conditions, the enthusiasm of the large crowd is tremendous, especially for Frank Maher, the night rider who will be second overall by the time he gets back to Galway. We look over the spectating James Cullen's shoulders to see the black metro coming out of the black. But John Price has now slipped to third. The fire in Fisher's veins has the tough Mac BMW up two more places to fourth. And Ian Donaldson is having a steady run in fifth, but he will finish the day without third gear. For Bill Connolly, however, disaster lies ahead. He'll hit a wall and he limps back to Galway in 25th place. Maybe he should have talked to Nigel Green. If ever there was a weekend for rain tires, this has got to be it. Yes, uh, I think it can be said these are the worst conditions I've certainly seen on a rally in Ireland for many, many years. But fortunately we have a new rain tire which we've used for the first time on a rally. We uh, were used by Bob Fadden and Frank Fennell. How would that differ from a, a road tyre that you would buy for your family suit? Well, uh, quite honestly, there's not really a much comparison. This is a very, very soft competition compound, which uh, on a drying road, you're probably talking about 30, 40 miles. But in wet conditions, like we've had here, Bob actually went through all day yesterday on four cars.
Sunday morning and there are some hairy tales about McHale. On the road out from Galway, his Bavarian motor wouldn't rev over 6,000, but it sounds like it's been fixed by stage 13. Maher punctures further down this stage and has to travel seven and a half miles on a flash. This allows John Price temporarily back up to second place. But here comes the man they all fear, Fisher, who will sweep past all but Austin McHale with 17 fastest times on his way to second place. Ian Donaldson is set for Group A victory because the BMWs are using wider tyres and consequently classify for Group B and Bob Fountain takes the important Group N or Showroom category. But the drama is far from over. In the lead car, the intercom cannot be heard and Austin must now rely on Ronan's hand signals at these frightening speeds on the flooded stages. The steam from time to time is also alarming in the car as the floods penetrate the damaged floor pan. Only one stage from home, but nothing is ever certain in rallying, as Austin McHale and Ronan McNamee are about to find out. And straight right. Yes. Push. Well, that very nearly cost the Extravision team the rally. However, to the great relief of the reception committee, led by Austin's daughter, all is well. And for the first time, we've had the privilege of sitting with a winner, thanks to the in-car camera, as Austin McHale and Ronan McNamee take the Lightenhouse Bakery's Galway Rally and an early lead in the Dunlop Championship. We're delighted to have won the event. It was a fair baptism in the car for the conditions this weekend and the stages were very wet, waterlogged and that sort of thing. But uh, uh, thankfully everything came together and the car was excellent and uh, it's a great start to the season. Ronan, come in here a minute. You, you must have really earned your money this weekend. Well, I was even down to hand signals later on today. <laughs> what about we, it? wasn't pace notes, it must have been water notes. Water notes and everything. What happened was the, we, one of the course cars ahead of us lost its exhaust and we came around the corner and we knocked our exhaust off of his exhaust. So for the last four stages I was like this and this telling them to go faster and slower. So it's a home victory again on the tarmac trail and as Austin McHale and Ronan McNamee don their Dunlop leaders hats, we can look forward to some epic struggles between the BMW twins in the year ahead and hopefully some more pleasant weather.